Hello everyone! Happy Saturday! Uh, thank you so much for joining me here today. Uh, this is a special day. We are going to finish our stitching hedgy craft bag here. It's that little drawstring bag and I do have some fabric that we're going to use for the lining as well. So thank you guys for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And usually I am on live every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, but today we are doing a special Saturday live stitching. Um, usually I'm just on for an hour, but today we are gonna be on until uh, I finish this bag. And I, I might actually, I'm thinking about making a pocket for it. So I wanna add a lining, because right now it's not lined, obviously. We're still stitching it. Uh, so I want to add a lining, just a really simple lining, and I think I'm going to throw a pocket in there, and this is going to probably be a new project bag uh, for me that I can drag around. <laughs> a good travel, a travel project bag. So they, these are still available, these bags. This is our embroidery of the month. It is only available till the end of June, so you got today and three more days. Uh, and there are the bundles that include the drawstring bag still. Uh, otherwise, there's also just the PDF printable version. But the bag is fun. Uh, there's a lot of people posting theirs in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. The bag is available at penguinandfish.com. I, I don't think I wrote that underneath here in the description or anything. So uh, that's where you can grab it from. But let's get going today. I'm excited to see how this ends up. Thank you guys for joining me. All right, so I already even have fabric picked out for the lining. Let me show you guys that that first. Um, so I just dug, I have um, a bin of just fat quarters that I've been collecting. These are some of my favorites. I think these are both Heather Ross uh, prints. She's the designer. But ah, look how beautiful they are. And it just kind of goes with, with uh, the stitch and hedgy. So this one... I actually needed two because one fat quarter isn't enough. So oh, one side's gonna be this and the other is gonna be this guy. Look, it's got a little, a little cricket or grasshopper in there. So these are the two fabrics I'm gonna use for my lining. If you have more of the same fabric, you know, feel free to make the lining sides both the same. Um, but you'll need about You'll need, you'll need to measure your bag. They'll probably all differ just a hair, but I think um, this is about, it's about like 14 inches by um, 16 or something. So I'm adding an inch on. So I, I, I kind of measured that I'll need like 15 inches by 18 inches, but we'll get to that part as well. But that's too, too um, small or too big to have just one fat quarter. Oh, you have the orange one. Lenore, Lenore says that she has this orange one. Ugh. She is, I think, my favorite designer. I love her work. My favorite fabric designer. She's just, ugh. it's all so pretty and beautiful all the time. She actually wrote a book, too, about um, uh, just growing up in the woods, basically, and, and uh, or in the wilderness. Uh, I think her family just kind of lived in the wilderness, something like that, and uh, it's just lovely and interesting and stuff too. Uh, Barbara, the designer is Heather Ross. Let's see if I have any selvage on here. Nope, not on that side. Nope, I got the selvages without, without the name on, but it's Heather Ross. So you can Google her, a ton of stuff will come up. Uh, she's awesome. Okay, so, oh, I can see right where we left off. So uh, uh, we were making these little yellow centers and it looks like we did some french knots some satin stitch and i remember this one was a satin stitch in the middle with french knots around uh, that was kind of fun so i think i think we'll do one more satin stitch and one more french knot so why don't we do let's do this one french knots and this one satin stitch oh and then i got all these little french knots hanging out here as well. Oh, and then we'll get the butterfly. So I'm gonna put it in the hoop uh, right about there and we'll finish this section. Then we'll start start over on these leaves. We gotta do that little butterfly too. And I think we'll end on the craft a happy life. And we actually, we do still have the little eyes and the the feet still. So here's the, the card that kind of comes with it. It has all the stitches and the colors on the back. So that's what I'm using 
uh, to refer back to. So um, just so you know, I have this on the side here and that's how I am kind of choosing choosing my colors and stuff. And then I have all my colors kind of left, left over here. I just, I traveled with this, so I bunched them all together. So let's see, we need that yellow. Well, first of all, let's get in the hoop. So I'm gonna put the hoop on the inside, the inner hoop on the inside. I'm just gonna kind of center, center kind of this area that we're working on. There, kind of like that. And I am going to pop this outer hoop on. I'm actually gonna push it down a little bit so it's close to the edge. Maybe not that far. So there was one thing that we are doing special that I don't normally do with embroidery. And uh, um, I'm actually keeping it a little looser in the hoop because I am using the sewing method of embroidery. And I'll show you guys again what that means. Uh, so the sewing method, that's where you go in and out with the needle in the same motion. So for example, here's my needle. Imagine there's thread on it, but all my stitches, I'm going to attempt to go in and out in the same motion like that. If this is my stitch, then I'll pull the thread through versus the stabbing, stabbing um, form of embroidery, which is my usual go-to where I go down, go from behind, pull it all the way through and then find my spot and come back up and then pull all the way through again. That's the stabbing way versus again, sewing where you go in and out in one motion. I like the stabbing because I feel like I can get a little bit more accurate, but we're using the sewing motion because I got all this back on here, the back of the bag, I got these handles. I don't wanna accidentally pull the needle through, like loop it around a handle or stab the back or something and then be stitching you know, the back into it. So the sewing method allows me to stay on the front. The thread just comes through here. It doesn't get tangled at all, um, but it is helpful for the sewing method to have a little looser fabric. It's much easier to go in and out in um, a loose fabric like this versus if it's super taut, then it's, then it's a little bit more difficult to get that, that motion. So that's the only kind of difference from how I normally work. All right, let's, let's get through our thread here again. All right, here's a big grouping. So it looks like I may have um, some ready to go. Yep, so I, I'm stitching with three strands of, of floss here. Uh, and this one, we already split from earlier, so that's great. I'm gonna just thread the needle. Okay, so we're ready to go. I'm gonna sit down and get you guys lower here. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me, oh my goodness. Hello, Grace. So it is actually, I'm gonna actually open the window shade here a little bit too. It's a bright, beautiful day here today. Uh, we woke up to our neighbors having a huge um, yard sale. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Grace. Uh, so that's, we woke up to just people yammering outside. All right, so I'm gonna, what did I say? I, was I gonna do this French knots? Let's do this satin stitch and this French knots. Um, okay, so I'm gonna weave into the backs of my stitches to start. I'm not tying any knots on, on the back. Uh, instead, I'm starting by weaving in stitches. and I leave in, when I don't have anything to weave it in, uh, then I'm like leaving a length of thread that I can weave in later. <laughs> Thanks you guys. So I hope you guys are having a good day so far. All right, I'm gonna come up. Let's, let's do sideways satin stitch. So I'm gonna come up on this side. And I'm coming up just slightly outside of the line too, so I can cover up the line. So you can make satin stitch in whatever direction you want. Like here, I got the, all my stitches going vertically. This one, I think I'm gonna go sideways. So this will be a little bit different. And I'm starting in the middle. You can start on the edge, uh, but we want we want to always start on the one side and always uh, end up on the other. I'm not gonna go back and forth. I'm not gonna like zigzag. It's all gonna be like around and around and around. 
So let's let's do one side. So I'm gonna go in and then I'm gonna come up right next to my first stitch. I don't know if you guys can tell that. There we go. There we go. So that's our first stitch. So we're gonna go down right next to that stitch, like right next to it. So just like a thread of, you know, a thread of the fabric over basically. There, our next one. Just moving the thread out of the way so I can see. <laughs> we have tons of people parking. At least they're wearing masks. I'm seeing them kind of walk in here. Um, so that's good that they're wearing masks. All right, here's gonna be my last, last stitch on this side. All right, and I'm gonna come up on the other side. Again, you could start on one side and work your way to the other side, but sometimes I like starting in the middle of a shape like this just to like kind of determine the direction that I wanna go. Ugh, it's I haven't done a Saturday stitch along like this for a while and it, it's fun. Sometimes I just get sad about not finishing a project and I wanna I wanna um go through and finish it up. So this will be nice. And I definitely wanna use this bag. Alright, here's gonna be my last stitch. This is gonna be like the perfect project bag to um just um especially when it's lined. Um, it's going to be the, a perfect project bag. Oh, I, I, I'm weaving in the ends, but I don't need to do that. What I'm going to do is travel. Oh, wait, I got to do all these dots everywhere. All right. I got to remember to do those dots. So I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to just go underneath stitches. We're going to use a lot of thread for this just because these dots are all over. So I'm going to just kind of, instead of making a big jump to that other dot, I'm going to just go through the backs of stitches, then, then the it'll be a, pr a little bit more protected. We are putting a lining in, so it doesn't really matter. But all right, let's get this French knot here. Yes, thank you guys for your thumbs up and, uh, and uh, your subscribes and stuff. If you hit subscribe and then hit the little bell that happens after, then you'll get an email uh, when I'm live. Uh, so that's just kind of a nice, nice reminder, I think. All right, I'm gonna zip up to here. Oh, Randy, you have a gazillion projects started, so uh, this helps get them finished. Yeah, uh, I have, um, I love bags and I keep, you know, I have a hard time throwing things out. Uh, so I have like just random tote bags that I've gone at different places or whatever. And um, just, you know, other little bags and stuff or just um, cute things and I don't, I only use like my one bag, right, to carry my computer and stuff around. Um, but I, I love my other bags so much that uh, I wanna see them, right? So I will have, um, I'll use them as project bags and just kind of display the bag. And I know that in there hides a project. So every once in a while, I'll, I'll pull that project out and, and work on that. But I think um, uh, what I like to do is have each project in their own place. You know what? I think I'm going to have to start a whole new thread. Um, this isn't going to be enough to do French knots and all of those. So I'm going to I'm going to finish these sideline French knots, and then we'll uh, we'll get a whole new thread to attack that last little bit, which is a, kind of a bummer because there's only that tiny little bit left to do. Or we could just do satin stitch too. We might have enough for satin stitch. Maybe I should just risk it. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna try and get French knots in there. It is a smaller circle. Maybe I'll try and just stick to the inside. This is gonna be annoying though. I'm gonna barely enough um, thread here. All right, so let's give it a try. I'm gonna attempt to do French knots in here. We'll just stick to the inside. But yeah, and I love, you know, I always travel with a 
project because you never know. You never know what might happen and you're like, ugh, I need to just stitch something here for a little bit or, oh great, we're stuck at this, um, you know, traffic jam for an hour. Let's, let's get stitching or something. So I always, I always have one in the car. Actually, that's where I have my emergency craft kit. I always have just a something to work on in the car. You know, it's a never finished project. Like it's, I only work on it when, when it, um, there is a moment of like, ugh, I need to work on something and there's nothing else around. But ugh, it comes in handy when you need it. And, um, but I do like keeping all my projects separated in their own bin. And I, I usually I like to have the supplies in there too. Like if I have an extra scissors or something, I'll try and I'll throw just like a little cheap scissors in with it. So I have that available. And I always put a little plastic bag. Uh, if I'm traveling, I always put a little like Ziploc bag for the trash, like all your little thread snippets and everything. Ugh. Yep, we're totally playing thread chicken right now, and I think uh, I think we're gonna make it. I'm gonna do one more, but it it is pushing it here. Like I'm, French knots, surprisingly take up a ton of thread. Actually, I kind of like it with just the four like that. That fills it in. We're gonna just do the four. Oh, well, thank you, Patty, for being here. I, I appreciate it a ton. I know we're not on YouTube on uh, Facebook today like we normally are. Um, and I don't have the links below or anything like that. You guys, if you are just coming in, this is a pro this is our embroidery of the month. It's on uh, penguinandfish.com if you want to get this bag to stitch. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not on Facebook today, but I contacted the company about that camera program and uh, um, I think I might have it figured out. I just have to do some tests. So we might be able to get back on Facebook um, and not have it just constantly be focusing. Like it was just, I think it was making us a little nauseous. Uh, all right, I think that's all I have left. So, okay, yeah, so I just have um, this little butterfly. Uh, someone uh, stitched him in with satin stitch and it looked so cute. I'm kind of tempted to do that. Like just filling, filling in like the wings with satin stitch. You know what, we're gonna just keep it to how it is here. Um, all right, so I got blue wings and we got that light tan body. So let's just, let's just get that out. Oh, the screen is better here, Sylvia. Oh, that's good to, good to go. Oh, hi, uh, Patricia. P is for Patricia, got it, awesome. <laughs> yeah, sometimes on, on YouTube here, you have to make up a username and it's, I don't have your name right away. All right, Ooh, no. yellow, here we go, here's some blue. This we must have cut earlier to do um, this little bit here. Okay. I wonder if it seems, hopefully it's not too dark for you guys. My screen seems a little dark. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Christy's saying the only thing I miss from Facebook is being able to, to like the comments. Yeah, the conversation works a lot better in Facebook because you can comment underneath other people's Oh yes, so Lenore, that's that's a good point. This is called this is from the Briar Rose Connect or uh, fabric collection um, from Windham Fabrics uh, by Heather Ross. So just Google Heather Ross Briar and you will find um, this. I mean, I would actually do it on Etsy. That might be because this is a very old collection at this point. Um, I've probably had this for ten years. And it's just so beautiful. I never wanted to use it, but now I think now I think it's gonna be perfect for this. And I'm I've been using my fabric more, so I'm trying not to I'm trying to actually use my fabric instead of just keeping it keeping it uh um keeping it pristine. I've been trying to actually use it, so uh that's my, like my new game. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the fabric I have actually. So uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna do the wings first. Yep, uh, exactly, Christy. I I feel like I'm honoring my fabric by actually using it. I used to just have the fabric sitting on my shelf just so I could see how beautiful it was. It's it's just too pretty. Oh, I have two strands here. It's just too pretty to. Um, cut up 
but I think this happened with the, the first Splendid Sampler, so several years ago, I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna use this beautiful fabric that I have. I'm just gonna cut it up and I'm gonna, it's gonna be sad because I'm cutting it up and it's not gonna be all beautiful anymore. Um, uh, but I had a totally different feeling from it. I thought it was just gonna be sad, but I, I felt like I'm honoring the fabric and it, it's so much happier made into something and seeing these little cute little bits of it here and there. Um, I, I really did feel like, okay, I'm honoring the fabric more by using it and being able to see it in the thing that I made versus it's sitting on the shelf. So um, that experience has made it easier for me now to cut into my very, very, very beautiful, pretty fabric. <laughs> what I think is like my top fabric that I that I just love. Um, I think I'm going to do a little away knot here so I don't have a, a jump. So I'm going to just tie a knot in the back here. Oh yes, uh, honoring the fabric versus just lovingly collecting it. And that was for sure what I was doing. So I'm making a away knot. Um, so like I said earlier, I like to weave in the ends at the beginning, but if I have nothing to weave in, like there's there's nothing kind of in this area without like leaping from here, then I gotta leave myself um, some thread. And I'm doing that by tying a knot in one end and then starting to stitch. And then I'll cut that away and I'll have that long piece of thread left to weave in. Um, it is a little wasteful in theory, but uh, I do like um, I do like that jump. Oh, you guys, we might have some battery issues here. Ugh. All right, you guys, I might have to re-switch this cord. So, ugh, how am I going to do that? Um, let's see. Oh, I thought I had this on. Okay. So we're we're like at low battery mode, so but I just turned on the computer. Hopefully this works. Hold on. Okay. I'm hoping we are getting power now. If we totally cut off here, I will another video. But I'm hoping I'm hoping we'll be okay. Ah. Stupid technology. So I think we're charging now, but again, it's, uh, it's just so stupid. I have this really long cord, USB cord to charge, and it, I don't think it works as well as like a short USB cord. It's dumb. Anyway, so here's that sewing method where I'm going in and out in that same motion. And that's just so I don't have to bring my thread to the back and get it all tangled. Oh, uh, Christy had a similar realization with a really nice molded candle. Oh, and then it got destroyed and you never got to use it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like um, I'm definitely honoring it more by using it. And then I can see it around and remember sewing with it. And that's a nice feeling. And. my phone might actually be using more energy than it's being given. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I might have to switch. Uh, I have a, a phone to do these videos that I, that I had to get because my normal phone, the telephone that I use, overheats when I do these live streams. So I had to get a whole freaking new phone um, because it didn't overheat. So I might have to go to my overheating phone if this, if this dies. But again, if, if I do get cut off, I'll, I'll start it up again. It'll just be a different stream. So you'll have to keep an eye out for that. Oh, you got the package, Randy. Yay, but I haven't opened it yet. Oh, you made some, oh, two pillowcases. Oh, for a birthday in local nursing home. That's awesome. I, my mom um, has made a ton of those, those uh, pillowcases. Are you talking about the one where you make like that, 
the edge and then you somehow like roll up the rest of it and then turn it it's like some like goofy tube you roll it up and all of a sudden magically it's together <laughs> that's what it kind of looked like looked like to me we we have a few of those here those would be fun to make that's that's a fun way to use up fabric that you just have around and don't know how else you're gonna use it or not necessarily wanting to make a quilt out of it but you have a lot of it those pillowcases are work great and they're so fun to see uh, how they turn out like the mix of mix of fabrics that you may not have normally chosen together I think that's kind of cool all right I'm weaving in this end that's all there is to this blue I think this might actually be it for the blue oh no the banner at the bottom is blue as well All right, and now I'm gonna just cut off this little knot that we made. And then that will give us the other end to weave in. So now when we do the brown, I'll have this area to, to weave in like these blue stitches. Oh, Kathy, yay, happy you found me. Found me today. So that just made me think, you can actually reply to people, just not underneath, right underneath them like you can in Facebook. Um, you just have to do like the at symbol and then write their name in and then they will, I think, get notified your response. Um, or they'll be able to see your response better. But yeah, it, it's definitely not the same as, as um, how easy it is to chat in Facebook but again I think I think I have the solve for that focusing issue that I had I just have to test it so next week we'll be back on both um, YouTube and Facebook I think I can actually be on Instagram too at the same time that I should try that sometime too oops there we go Alrighty, our three little threads. We'll be done with this little area in no time. And then, then I think we're gonna jump over and I'm gonna do this big leaf. So I'll start like down here. You know, I could actually, while we're over here, I could get his eyeballs done. Yeah, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that last because his little feet are black too. And if I have them both in the hoop at the same time, that'd be that'd be better. Okay. Weave in the end. Oh, you guys, I stitched up July's embroidery of the month a couple nights ago. So July's embroidery is just about ready. And I'm really, really excited for this one. Um, it's a new design. So uh, all the embroidery of the months in theory are new designs. This one wasn't, but this one we brought back this um, bag, we brought it back after um, it not being around for like a, a year. So we're bringing it back for the month. Um, and we actually never sold it as a, as a bundle before. I think I'm gonna start with his little antennas here. But yes, yeah, so, so uh, July 1st, I think it's a Wednesday. Does that sound right? I think it's Wednesday. Um, that is, the date for the new embroidery of the month. I'm really excited about it. And uh, I was just thinking I would totally take requests for uh, embroidery of the month too. So if there's something you really, really, really would love to stitch, uh, let me know. Maybe I'll start it as a thread in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Like, what do you want to see for Embroidery of the Month? And, and we'll get like a whole list going there. That'd be, a, I think that'd be a good idea. That'd be kind of fun. All right, one more stitch. Oh, you guys, I, I went back to the stabbing motion. Ah, jeez. See, this is what I'm saying. So this is the stabbing. This is my normal way of stitching, where I go all the way underneath, but I have so much opportunity for getting it tangled or stuck somewhere, uh, and then me stitching a whole pile without me knowing it that I 
I, I wanted to do the sewing method, but I just, my brain forgot about that for a sec here. So, <laughs> well, we're done now, but I gotta remember, do the sewing method, not the, not the uh, stabbing method. Oh, Pamela, that's that'd be a great idea. So Pamela was saying that I always ex I, I, I expected the wings to be um, a lazy daisy. Oh, that would have been cute. I should have done that. I think uh, I think I'll do that for the bees. Yeah, the bee. Wait. Yeah, the bee wings I have as lazy daisy, but that would have totally worked. I could have just, you know, you can do a lazy daisy stitch or a single chain stitch. Um, they don't have to meet, like they don't have to meet uh, like how the ends don't have to meet like these did. I could have started it here and ended it here and tacked it down. Oh, that would have been cute. I wish I would have done that. Oh, well, next time, I suppose. I like that idea, though. Like I said, someone else uh, in the group sat and stitched it, and I thought that was really cute, too. So we have this little bumblebee. His will be little um, stitches, but... That would have totally worked for his wings too. All right, so I'm gonna move the hoop down here. Unfortunately, I can't get this whole thing in this hoop. So I'm gonna go down here. Are these two little yellow dots? Oh, there's dots all over here. Okay, so first I'm going to do the green. So all these little grasses, kind of like here. All the little grasses are green. All these lazy daisies are green. I think I'm gonna do the kind of, um, instead of doing all of these, single chain stitches or lazy daisies first and then coming back and doing the back stitch. I think I'm gonna back stitch up to the point where I got the lazy daisies, do the lazy daisies, then keep back stitching, do the more, the, again, and then keep going and going and going. I think that'll be less wasteful of thread, I think. All right, I, looks like I have a piece cut already here. So let's split this into the three, and then I'll have to come back and do all these little French knots everywhere. Ooh, you're watching uh, um, for Zen Sheiks in the Cafe Faucet. I don't know. I'm not sure I pronounced that ever correctly. I'm actually not sure I've ever said that out loud before but his uh, fabrics are also interesting. And the Zen Chic, that's cool too. I'm, I've been thinking about fabric and stuff again. So I, I used to design fabric, this is several years ago. This is like probably five or more years ago now. And it was fun, but just tons and tons of work. Um, but I don't know, I think it'd be kind of fun to, to work on again. Try and um, contact fabric companies again and and work with them. All right, uh, we'll start with these little grasses. I think maybe maybe there's enough to weave in the backs of these French knot stitches, even though there's not really a lot um, to weave in uh, with French knots, but we'll try and I'm realizing that I don't have a hoop in here yet. Let's get that down here. I'm gonna try and get as much of these leaves in it as possible. So I think this is probably Good. Again, I'm going to try and leave it loose because we'll definitely be doing the sewing method here, the, that in and out right away sewing method, because this is way down on the bag. And <laughs> if I was trying to do the stabbing method where I pull the thread in the back, um, I would very, very likely stitch through the back of this design or back the back of the bag or catch a handle or something. So I'm gonna leave it a little loose again. It's a bit easier. Okay. And you know what? It is a beautiful Saturday morning, so I got my coffee in one of my favorite mugs here. I'm gonna take a sip. Oh, there's nothing better. Oh, you guys, I have to show you this too. So look at this, so I have this mug. Um, but look what I have in it. It is all my presser feet. So if you guys remember, I had that whole big collection of presser feet that I bought, like 50 different presser feet for like whatever your needs are or whatever, right? And it comes in a box where they're each in their own area. And the 
box opened and they all freaking dumped out. So I haven't matched them up and, and put them back. So I'm like, I'm just gonna put it in a, I'm gonna put it in a cup and it's gonna just sit here. <laughs> so if I ever need, I'm gonna have to organize it at some point because if I, if I need like a zipper foot or something, I'm gonna have to dump this completely out and then find, find something that, that'll work. But <laughs> I thought for now, uh, I do that. So um, when you see that cup behind me um, during my Facebook lives now, or my uh, my streaming here, you'll know what's in it. <laughs> uh, I just uh, I moved something and they all fell out, and I'm like, no, uh, just dumped everywhere. All right, there really isn't much to to weave in here, so I'm gonna just kind of head this way a little bit. That was not fun. I gotta. Cl That's what this this uh, this weekend for me is gonna be cleaning. I I'm just finishing up stuff. So this is basically kind of like cleaning for me. We're we're finishing up a project. Finishing it up. We're getting rid of the the clutter of unfinished things, right? So I don't know. It's gonna be like a full vacuum uh, wash everything and. Uh, you know, put everything in every room back in its place sort of weekend, I think. We'll see. See how it goes. We always say that, but then we always end up working on something. All right, here we got that sewing method again. Just the in and out in the same motion. I am keeping, you can kind of see my fingers back here. I am kind of just keeping my fingers there just to feel if something goes wrong, like I'll be able to feel with my back finger if, if like a knot happens for some reason. Um, so it's just kind of like an extra eyeball on the back, really. All right, I think I'm gonna jump up to the top here. Actually, no, I think I'm gonna jump here because then I'll be up here, then I'll be down there, and then I can jump over there. Oh, you need to have a put away day for your stuff too, Barbara. I have so much on my table, I can't find anything. I know, it's it's so time and ugh. Like we can't even dust or vacuum or ugh, anything because there's just too much stuff around. And and yeah, like our fridge needs a full go through, like cook what's in there and, uh, you know, just organize it and just, ugh, I need everything to be clean again. So this week is the week. We're actually going to the warehouse um, on Sunday, tomorrow. And we're going to be doing that at the warehouse, too, because stuff is getting out of hand over there, too. So bringing that up, though, um, I will be at the warehouse tomorrow. So if you, um, if you order anything, I will get that prepped on... Uh, on um, Sunday, and then it'll go out in Monday morning's mail instead of Monday afternoon's mail. All right, I'm gonna jump over here. Get this side. Gosh, I'm almost out of thread already. I might be running out of thread just with these little grassy bits. This sewing method though, this in and out in the same motion method, it really is faster, much faster, I think. Um, but again, the accuracy that I can get with the stabbing method, I think is just better. All right, the July Aurifil block of the month. So I get to be the, de the designer for July's block. We just finished June's block last night. And I really love how that turned out. Um, and I'm the designer for July. So the blocks are released on the 15th of the month. So it won't be available till um, July 15th. But then um, it'll be my little interview on the Aurifil site, the Aura Buzz, their blog. And uh, yep, then you'll be able to download, download my pattern. And 
and I'm gonna make it right away. So typically uh, my weeks are split up in um, by project and typically we wait to the last full week of the month to do the orophil. Um, so it's kind of sitting around, um, sitting around for a week. This, I, I gotta weave in the end. I don't have enough here to do anything. Um, but for July, I am gonna start the Aurifil block the day it's released. So it'll be like a midweek thing, I think, too, if I remember correctly. I have to look at the calendar again. So we'll stop whatever we're working on and start that, because then uh, um, people who want to follow along that aren't aren't one of you guys that are that are here here all the time, um, we'll be able to start it with them right away, right when they want to work on it. So, so next month is going to be a little off of our normal schedule, but uh, I think it'll be fine. So we probably won't do, we probably won't stitch the embroidery of the month for July until the last week. So we're basically going to be flipping, um, flipping our embroidery and orophil weeks. Usually the embroidery is week three and the orophil is week four, and we're just going to flip those basically, even though it's like a midweek thing, so it's not going to be a clean, uh, it's not going to be like a clean, perfect week flip, but we'll figure it out. But I am, I'm really excited about both. So I, I hope you guys really like it. Uh, it, you can make it, there's like an easy version and a, and a dig into it a little bit more version and you can do either. And I think either are going to look nice for the Aurifil block. I can't say what it is yet, but I think it might say the colors or and even the the city on the website so um but i think it's gonna be nice i think it's gonna be fun and then and then the week after right away we'll stitch the july embroidery of the month and i'm really excited about that too there'll be some fun surprises with with that i think ah can't wait so the embroidery of the month, that I'll release the first of the month though, so you won't have to wait till won't have to wait till the 15th for that. But yep, the 15th for um the Aurifil. Ooh, this is a big lazy daisy stitch. I'm trying to go back to that same hole. Eh, close enough. I'm trying to keep them kind of loose still too, so they look like that teardroppy shape. But man, these take up tons of thread, so we'll be switching thread a whole lot now, I think. All right. There we go, and now let's finish up these. We'll, we'll backstitch up to the next spot. I think this is actually going pretty quick today. How long has it been so far? Oh, we're 45 minutes in, so not too bad. This will probably take probably at least another 45 minutes to, to finish the embroidery. Maybe that's a little much. I don't know. Eh, probably. It'll probably take that much yet. I'm not sure if my estimation game for for uh, how long embroidery takes is the best. But then we will go ahead and sew that lining. The lining, I think, will actually go pretty quickly. Oh, and I was going to show uh, my grandma's sewing machine here, but I forgot to bring it over here, so... Maybe um, if John comes in, I'll have them have him bring it over. But in other news, I think my my 70s sewing machine. I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough thread here. We're gonna risk it though. Uh, my 70s. Uh, this is a bad idea. We're gonna do it though. My 70s Kenmore sewing machine, the one that I can't get the feed dogs to come back up on. I I am part of a Kenmore, like vintage Kenmore Facebook group. There's a Facebook group for everything. I love it. Um, 
And someone seemed to have the same problem as me, that the feed dogs wouldn't come above the surface or she could push them down easily. And so I, I saved the video on, she shot a little video of it. I saved that on Facebook. So I'm gonna open that up again and see if that's, I'm gonna open up the bottom of my machine. But if this is the case and it, someone, someone showed her how to fix it, and if this is the case and then it works all of a sudden, ugh, I'm gonna be so happy. Cause I haven't um, used that machine in, in ages because I can't get the feed dogs to go up enough to pull the fabric. So it's basically, I've, I've only been using it for free motion quilting, which you want the feed dogs down. So it works perfect for that still, uh, but I'd like to use it again. Um, so hopefully this fix will work. So I'm gonna have to have a, like a fix it day one of these days because I still need to, I want to try and see if I can figure out what's wrong with my grandma's sewing machine too. That's, that's a tougher one. That one, that has a mechanical issue where the timing of the bobbin is different than the, the needle. So it's, when the needle goes down, it's, it, it's hitting metal. Like something's not um, lining up. And I, I don't know anything about that. I've, I've never fixed that sort of stuff before. Um, where's the end here? I'm all all over here. Um, so that's a bigger deal, but it might be fun to just uh, see if I can figure it out. At least oil it and open it up, undo some screws, see what's in there. You know what, maybe we do that next month because uh, like I said, we're gonna have some weird days that, or like our weeks are gonna be different where, you know, because of the orophil um, thing. So maybe one of the days I just open up these machines and we take a peek at them, see if I can fix them. And if not, whatever. If not, then I'm bringing a couple machines to the fix it guy and seeing what he says and paying money. Ugh. But once I get my grandma's machine working, whether, whether I figure it out or whether, um, other people do. Oh, here. Hey, John. Yeah. Can you get grandma's sewing machine that's in the corner by the yeah, fireplace? Yeah, and then just bring it over here. I want to show it. Hi, everyone. <laughs> John says hi. All right, so it looks... Ugh, we're back in low battery mode, you guys, so... Hopefully we, again, if we get conked out, <laughs> Barbara says I, if we get conked out, then I will start a new stream with my other phone. I think it just uses more than it puts in. Um, so it's a problem. All right, let's weave in this. I have a feeling this is going to take so much green thread by the time, or green floss, um, by the time we make it to the top. If you're wondering, sometimes I say thread, sometimes I say floss. I'm, I'm speaking of the same thing. I'm not, it's not one thing or the other. I'm, I'm just using it interchangeably. Hey, Darlene. Thanks again, everyone, for joining me here. I know this is... This is a part of your Saturday, and and I, I appreciate you just hanging out with me. It's sometimes fun to just have a nice, long craft moment on a weekend. It makes it feel like a weekend, doesn't it? Gotcha, I'm up to more of these stitches right away, these big lazy daisies. These are, this is what takes up the takes up the um, thread, these big stitches. But they're cute, I like them. Sometimes it's easier not to make that loop first, it's easier to just come up and then wrap, wrap that thread around. There we are. Oh, I should have 
see I did the stabbing method again. I better check. Better check that I didn't wrap my thread around anything. Okay, we're fine. All right, another two stitches. You okay, just put it right there. Want. Just put it right there. <laughs> Funny. All right, you guys, here's here's uh here's grandma's old machine. I we think it's from the 60s. Like we think it's actually like a super cheap machine from the 60s, like something that yeah, that she got just for super cheap somewhere. But look, it's so cool. It's like this orange band on it. Um, <laughs> it's kind of fun, right? So uh, the needle just hits hits the, um, it's just not, something is just way off with the mechanics down here. But I'd love to, gosh, are there even screws anywhere on this? This must come apart somehow. So I'm gonna have to unscrew this, open it up, see what's going on and and we'll figure it out. But <laughs> so this is the new old sewing machine that we're gonna have to figure out figure out next year. <laughs> kind of fun though. It's I I just love kind of acquiring these little babies. <laughs> they could just just as easily be thrown out. Oh, it looks like your singer fifty fifty. What is this? I don't know. I I'm, I'll have to tilt it around. Uh, Singers are, you should be able to fix something, fixing the tension, it looks similar. Oh, even to featherweights, oh, interesting. Screws are underneath, okay, so, oh, underneath. So that's that's what I think we're gonna have to do. We're gonna just unscrew the whole thing, take a look at it. Um, you know, we'll, we'll do a, an oiling and cleaning if it looks like it needs it. I think my dad might have tried doing some of that stuff already. Um, but yeah, we're gonna just look at the mechanics of it, see if we can figure it out, because there is stuff hitting things that shouldn't. Oh, that's true too. So Paula says that the luckily most Singer manuals are online. Yeah, and Singer does a fabulous job at being able to pinpoint what machine you have. So I just have to find the serial number, which should be very easy on here too. And, and I should be able to get like all sorts of information pretty quickly. But I haven't done any of that yet. Um, all we've done so far is bring it home. <laughs> but a new baby to to figure out. I'm I'm pretty stoked actually. So yeah, so maybe maybe sometime next month when we have like an extra random day or two, uh we'll we'll see what's going on with this one. But yeah, so when this one gets fixed, it'll it'll go back to my parents' house. They actually have a um a a stand for it or a, a case. Oh, how can I figure out Pamela, Pamela says she has a featherweight from her, I think she said aunt. How do I find it out? So you can actually contact Singer directly. Somewhere on the featherweight, I think on the featherweights, right on the front, on the bottom area, there will be like a little um, area where the serial number will be. So you can actually go to the Singer website, I think, and, and email them directly. And they will give you the, like, the full history of that. Like, it... it, it it will tell you the day it was made and in what factory um, Singer will. So that's how I knew that John's great grandmother's old Singer that we have, like, was made in like 1929 in uh, uh, wherever. I have like June 29th or something. Like I have the, the exact day and where it was made too. <laughs> I have it written down somewhere, but Singer is great like that. So especially for a featherweight, I think they, you know, I don't know when they get newer, like this one here, but the, those old ones, they do have all that data and it's just exciting. So I would email them somewhere. There'll be some sort of contact. I would just Google how to find, how to contact Singer about vintage sewing machine or, or something like that. And you'll come up with a, a thing, but yeah, let us know, Pamela. Um, if you get get a hold of them, like the info on it, and there is a lot. Of, if you have a featherweight, there are so many featherweight Facebook groups, and all those people are so knowledgeable about that stuff too. So you could spit out your social, your not social security number, your serial number uh, there, and um, someone there might know too. But you can contact Singer directly. They're they're great with that. All right, I, uh, well, we can get one out of, out of this at least, I think. Oh, you just got your, 
grandmother's uh, treadle sewing machine. So, so this one, uh, this one, there was, it, my grandpa was like, oh, there's a sewing machine at the house. And we were like, what? We never seen a sewing machine at your house. And she, he was like, oh, I'll bring it over. And uh, he thought it was one of these old Singer sewing machines because it had uh, the whole treadle base and everything. But then uh, we found out that this was the sewing machine in it, which is still really cool. Uh, but it 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 has a base, although it's been modified. So it actually looks really cute. It's one of these cute old treadle bases. So it has like the the um, it doesn't have the pedal. So the pedal's not on it, but it should. It looks like it should have the pedal. Um, someone had made a new top for it. And then there's like that box that sits on the top that that um, where the sewing machine is underneath. So it doesn't, it's not sitting within it. It doesn't fold down. It's one of these ones with, with the box on the top. And all that is so beautiful. Like the whole thing as just like a furniture piece looks so cool. And to have a working sewing machine underneath it would be even more cool. So <laughs> uh, once this is a working sewing machine again, it will go back and uh, um, it's just a really pretty furniture piece right now at my parents' house. So we're, we're playing doctor with it, whether it's outsourcing our doctoring or we figure it out ourselves. Um, but yeah, then it'll, then it'll go back, back to its real home. Which is good, I have too many old sewing machines here. Ugh, but I just want to rescue them all, they're all so beautiful. I keep saying like, um, if we ever have a bajillion dollars, I'm gonna get uh, like, a, like a barn that has like floor to ceiling, well maybe not that many, but vintage sewing machines that we rescue and we restore and they all work and you know people can come and play with them if they want and it's just gonna we're just gonna save all these like they're pieces of history I feel like you know people get rid of them for nothing though because I mean they're heavy they're heavy bulky pieces that you know if you don't appreciate then it's just a thing in the house that's super bulky. And, you know, they're a common at the time or, you know, whenever uh, in its history, it's just like a utilitarian product. It's like having, you know, spoons and forks, right? So they weren't, there's not much mental value in it unless you are in the crowd <laughs> like we are and just think it's a part of history and it's so interesting and it's so useful and I don't know, I get sad when all these poor sewing machines aren't appreciated. But yeah, so two sewing machines that, that need some love. All right, I think I'm gonna go up this way. Oh, we're getting close to the top here, aren't we? You know what, I'm gonna stab this in and we'll get our next stitch ready to go just to lock down lock down that um, stitch but I think I'm gonna scooch this up already we got up here really quickly we got started yammering and we're up the top already all right let's try flatten this out again cool so all right I'm gonna just shift up we'll finish these stitches up here uh, and then we'll get this little bead done and then we'll work our way back down. We got all these little dots that uh, French knots that we have to do. So we'll end up back down here. Then we'll do the craft a happy life banner. And we still got his little eyeballs and his little toes to do. I was debating maybe not even doing those because they are black already. But um, when I had taken a picture of this earlier before, before the live stream, it did look a little light like it looked like it needed the texture of stitching and stuff those little um the little eyes and the feet so i'm like all right fine i'll stitch them all right we're back in business i'm gonna go up this side first and then we'll jump back down here all right little side branchy Again, just another heads up. If my phone 
completely dies. I think, I literally think that doing video here today is, is taking up more juice than it's getting from the cord. So um, if it does die, I will come back. We're gonna finish this no matter what. I'll just um, be on my other phone. But hopefully we're, hopefully we'll be fine. This is going speedy though. All right. I think we might actually watch movies today and clean up, clean and watch movies. That sounds like a nice, nice Saturday, especially after a, a nice craft morning. It's, it's like a reset day. We'll 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 craft because it's fun and this is like cleaning too like i said because we'll be finishing it and it'll be we'll get that ex that feeling of ooh, we finished a thing i'll be excited about that and that, that'll motivate me to clean up the house like crazy and if there happens to be a movie happening on tv at the same time even better <laughs> drink coffee all day Ugh. It's nice and sunny. Maybe we'll go for a walk. It's gonna be a nice, nice day. All right, I kind of did this part weird, but let's just, we'll make one big stitch here. I forgot that I was going up with the back stitches and just kept doing the lazy daisy stitches. All right, I'm gonna jump all the way back down here. There we are. All right, a little side frond is done. I'm almost out of thread again. These lazy daisies suck it up. We might be able to get, yeah, I think we'll probably only get one. Maybe I can force two out of it, we'll see. Close enough. So, uh, can we get another? Let's try. Oops. Shoot. That's what happens when I run out of thread. I start pulling the thread off the needle. Ugh, we really don't have enough thread for this, but it'll be tough to weave it in. That's going to be the problem. Come on. There we go. Uh, Rebecca, I'm with you. I've not had a haircut yet, and I, I've cut John's hair twice, and he, he probably needs it again, but yeah, I don't know. That freaks me out, too. And a lot of, they say, at least, if you are going to get a haircut or something, just get a cut. Like, don't get a whole, don't get it dyed or, or any of that, because, like, the less time you're in a closed space the better, like the less exposure. But still, I mean, I don't know. It's weighing risk, right? I don't, and uh, I'm not sure I want to risk, risk that, but it's the world we live in now, I guess. <laughs> More green, please. Oh, I don't need this much. Let's just cut a normal size piece again. There we are. And depending where you are, <laughs> Uh, not everyone wears face masks and stuff like, um, my father-in-law got a haircut in Wisconsin and in a lot of places in Wisconsin, they, it's totally poo-pooed the whole mask wearing. So his hairdresser did not wear a mask. Um, so he, he wore a mask, but I don't know. It's still, it's still a risk thing, I think.
and some of these COVID cases, what they consider mild COVID cases, <laughs> a lot of them seem pretty extreme still, but they're still considered mild because they don't end up immediately in a hospital. But there can still be a lot of lung damage and stuff. So I don't know. I'm I'm trying to stay as stay away as as much as I can. You just never know. You could still stay away and um and not still stay away and then just be in touch with that one person that happens to get it too. So you just never really know. But I feel like I don't know. I'm reducing my risk a little bit in theory. Oh, in Mississippi they're skyrocketing. Yeah, I saw a map this morning and. Gosh, all of California and gosh, and most of the South seem like they're exploding right now. In Minneapolis, or like Minneapolis, this Minnesota area, it looks like it's going down a hair, but you know, obviously that could change at any moment too. Oh, Rebecca, you're in Texas where cases are so high. Yeah, ugh. The asymptomatic spreaders freak me out. I'm with you too, Kathy. Sometimes it feels like we're too paranoid and other times overkill. Well, that's the thing. Like, that's the thing is you don't really know, right? But that's why I'm like, you know, I'll be one of those people on the side of maybe it is super bad, which, you know, I think it actually is. But... Why risk the other direction? Like, I mean, granted, I'm pretty introverted, so I'm down with all this staying at home anyway, and um, or just minimal going out, or you know, them bringing out food for me. Like, I, I'm I'm down with all that, but I know not everyone can do that and stuff. So I don't know. They're saying even like the face shields might be better because. It can go through your eyes and stuff too. So I, I just try and wear glasses and um, face mask when I'm out and about. Yeah, exactly, Randy. Exactly. Who wants that bill too? And the thing is, like I was saying, some of these minor cases are still like extreme lung damage where you might, still might need a lung transmit, transplant later because the lungs are damaged so much. And that's a mild case. And yes, there's asymptomatic people and stuff too, but I don't know. I don't want the risk of, honestly, I don't want the risk of a freaking cold or the flu either, you know? So I'd be okay if this is just, if this becomes more of the norm of that, if you're outside and you know that you're sick, and the thing is with COVID, you don't know if you're asymptomatic, but even if you have a cold, like let's say you are you have to go out and about and you know you have a cold, you know you've been coughing or you know you have a runny nose or whatever, and you know it's not allergies, then why not wear a mask to protect the people around you, you know? Like that's, I think that should be a thing now. Um, you have the flu, but you have to go out or you have any sort of sickness and you know it's not, it's just minor and it's not going to be super annoying if people get it, but you still, wouldn't it be nice if you didn't give it to someone, someone else? So I hope it becomes more common, even, even after all this COVID goes away, let's assume that happens at some point or we have a vaccine or whatever, right? Let's assume sometime uh, we'll have this under control. I like the idea of if you know you're sick that that you just wear a mask and people don't think of any, anything of it. I think that would be great. Because why not? It helps everyone, I think. Exactly, Christy. It's completely socially acceptable in many Asian countries. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, why not? It's just, you know, and it can be a new fashion thing and stuff, too. Yeah, why spread anything exactly? Like, now I'm like, dude, if I have a cold, but I needed to go to the grocery store, I should be wearing a mask, because isn't that, like, the nice thing to do? I mean, yeah, it's not helping me any. I already have the cold or whatever, but it's sure nice that I'm not sneezing it all over, like, all the fruit or whatever. Um, <laughs> or, like, the poor, like, high schooler who is 
you know, working with the mask on and is exposed to so many people. Um, I'd be happy not giving them anything. Um, black. I'm going to get the black out. And by poor, I don't mean that they're necessarily, like, money poor. I just mean, like, it's a bummer to be exposed to that many people every day, I think, in, in this, something like this. So, I don't know. It's a problem. Alright, I'm gonna do the wings and his little lines and his little antenna and then then we'll do the yellow yellow around him this little bumble little bumble and then we'll come back and um do all these these knots i think i am going to start with an away knot again just because black you can really see underneath quite a bit so we'll start with that excess thread like what we did over here for this guy I'm kind of excited now that the sewing machine's over here. I'm excited to break this down and look at it a little bit more. And they all have their little quirks and stuff too. Like this one, for example, is a is a zigzag machine. This uh, vintage sewing machine. It can it can do the zigzag, but it pivots the whole head like this, like angled back and forth like this. It doesn't move back and forth like this. It goes. It's kind of I hadn't seen that before and. They all, they all have something, something unique with them. All right, we're going to just put this all the way over here. Yeah, I have a friend who has just said that, I don't know, she lives in a, I don't know, a community that has a pool. And she said that all these kids are at the pool and, um, or like another place over or something, but she said all these kids came back with COVID from going to this pool and now are like infecting all their families and stuff. So even just going to the pool, an outside pool, now all these kids have it. I mean, and they're, most of them are asymptomatic, but they're giving it to people, you know? Ugh. It's gotta be tough for families. Like, I don't have any kids, so I can't speak to any of that, but I would I would think that it would be really tough to be at home during the summer and to not have school and all that and then not be able to do anything either. To like see that pool over there and know that you're not like allowed in it. That would be tough for a kid. Again, I would just be sitting at home reading books when I was little or whatever, or playing outside in, in, in the yard or, or that sort of thing. <laughs> so as an introvert, I think uh, I have it a bit easier. But then if you live in an apartment building, I mean, that's a whole nother world of risk and ugh, it's just all so scary. Even if it's a small percentage of people, that doesn't mean that you can't be part of that percentage, I guess, risk-wise. Uh, anyway, I'll stop talking about it. It's, it's, it's on my brain, though. I'm sure it's on everybody's brain. Look at this itty-bitty cutie. All right, I'm going to head to the back again. That's all, all she wrote on that. Weave in this end. And then we will snip the little thread and weave in the other end. We'll use this guy, this, this bit later for the eyes and the feet. So I'll save that piece. Or cut off our little knot. So we're like basically reserving thread for later. Um, so that beginning of the thread we're reserving for now when we can weave it in. Dang, our neighbors are having a hopping, um, rummage sale man i think um she has a, a bunch of kids in the area so all of the um oh, like adult kids our neighbor 
So I suspect that they, as a large group, are having a large uh, rummage sale of all of their stuff, like all of the families, the several families worth of stuff. But there are cars parked on both sides, just forever down the street here. So yeah, maybe we'll have to put our masks on and, and peek at that too. But even with the mask on, I'm still freaked out. So we'll, I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll look from afar. We just try to avoid, <laughs> avoid everyone. We'll peek from beyond our um, lilac bush divider <laughs> between our driveways. All right, I'm gonna do the yellow of his body. And then I think I am gonna just jump and start doing these French knots. The yellow, I don't think you'll be able to see so much, like a, a jump like that from one object to another on the back. Then we'll just work our way back down. I'll probably need another piece of yellow along the way. Oh, I could, I could 